This is not a fun video to make. Hey everyone, so today is... Uh, it's not a fun video to make, I already said that. Um, in one of my latest videos, I can't remember if it was the T-Shot video or the video about Calvin Guerra, but I told you guys that I wasn't able to get top surgery on March 9th when it was scheduled. Instead of just like gracing over it, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about it and not just say it once in a, in a video because I feel like it's not talked about enough um, complications with surgery and top surgery in general. It's all the happy endings. So I felt like I should bring this up. So I was supposed to get top surgery with the McLean Clinic at, or not at, in Mississauga, Ontario. I think it's right near Toronto. So I have been in contact with the McLean Clinic since early 2020, like maybe like April, May last year. I could have gotten surgery last year, but I just chose with like timing with school and work and everything that it would be better to wait till after my first year of college was done, which is this month, May. And I've it was done on May 1st, and that's when I thought I could get surgery. My plan kind of jumped around a couple times just because I was so like eager to get top surgery, and I still am now. But in January, I decided well, I kind of realized that I had a week off in March, which was the week of March 9th. I contacted the McLean Clinic and I said, hey, I know I, was, I, know I said I was gonna contact you in May, or not in May, but have the surgery in May. Do you have any dates for the week of whatever that week is in March? And um, they said, yeah, we have a time for, I think it was like 11 or something for March 9th, but they couldn't confirm it with me yet because I haven't had my consultation, so they want you to have a consultation and they need you to do a 10% de uh, deposit just to know that you are um, committed to paying the full amount and getting your surgery. So I had a consultation at the end of February and that confirmed the surgery date for March 9th and I was so excited. I was so, so excited to get this surgery. I go through a lot of physical pain from minding my chest because uh, it's just around your ribs. And I, even though I used to be a size small and um, that was really painful um, after being on T just from the fat redistribution, your body changes. So I got a size medium in between like the couple months of me being on T and then it took like three months for the binder to get here because of COVID and then I get the binder and it still doesn't fit. I barely can wear it because of how painful it is. I only kind of wear it for videos and when I go out to specific places, but it, I'd rather, you know, you'd, you'd rather go through the physical pain than um, have the mental pain of, of um, and the dysphoria from not wearing the binder. It was so like relieving to know that I was gonna get surgery and like actually never have to bind again. But that changed uh, not quickly. Um, I was really excited for surgery for a couple weeks. That's my cat sneezing, Bobby. He's up in the closet right now, but I can't show you because you won't be able to see him, he's too high up. However, four days before my surgery, uh, I got a call from the McLean Clinic um, saying that they needed to talk to me about some specific things. Since 2020, the first time I talked to the McLean Clinic, um, they knew about the vocal cord surgery that I had in August of 2018. They were very aware of it and um, I guess they didn't see it as a problem. So they never really looked into it until the anesthesiologist looked into it um, the, the week before. Because usually um, my understanding is that the anesthesiologist gets like paperwork for each person that they're working with that week. Um, the week before, the anesthesiologist just got the information and then kind of realized that there was a little bit of conflict with 
the vocal cord surgery that I had. So later on that day, I got another call because the first one was them kind of saying, we don't know yet if you will be able to get surgery, but we'll call you back around like two o'clock to confirm whether or not you can. Yeah, I got another call around 2 p.m. explaining that I would not be able to get top surgery. This was because they weren't sure if the um, implant in my throat would be damaged or moved from the breathing tube because you need a breathing tube when you get top surgery. And the implant is from my vocal cords, so they really don't want to move that because it could change the sound of my voice. It could just, you, like, we don't know what could happen, you know, or at least I don't know what could happen. If I didn't have the implant, my voice would sound really raspy and quiet. I keep yawning, so my eyes are probably getting redder and redder with each cut. But the McLean Clinic just wasn't comfortable doing the surgery because they are only a clinic and if, if anything did happen during the surgery to me um, or there was an emergency, they wouldn't be able to help me. And that's kind of a liability on their part. They have to make sure that I'm safe and also for them, they don't want to be sued. So they kind of explained that it would be better for me to get the surgery done at an, at an actual hospital instead of going to a surgery clinic. So that was horrible news, of course. I've kind of, I've accepted it, but I'm also just hopeful for the future. It was the worst also because everyone was telling me that I could be excited and um, I had some guards up and I was really trying not to get my hopes up for it. And I really didn't, but also, like, I did have a whole breakdown after that call that I wasn't getting surgery. Like, of course, I had my hopes up to an extent because it was only four days before, like, what could happen, you know? It kind of also felt too good to be true. Like, I was thinking, like, oh, I'm getting top surgery. And then I was like, oh, I'm getting top surgery. Like, I'm actually, like, this is, like, the last thing that I really want to do for myself. Like, I just couldn't believe that I'd finally have, like, a flat chest and I wouldn't have to bind anymore. I'm still upset about it, of course, especially because of, um, lockdown in Ontario. Um, all scheduled surgeries were put on hold, so I can't even, like, look into getting top, like, I can look into it, but I'm not going to be able to get top surgery or even get a consultation date because they don't know when this lockdown is going to end. Overall, though, it's not really the McLean Clinic's fault. I really think that they should have looked into it before. Even if they don't think the surgery is a problem, they should really look into it because they did know since 2020 and it, like, it kind of, it wasted a lot of time for me. I could have went to a different sur surgeon and already had it done before this lockdown happened. But overall, the McLean Clinic was very helpful in finding a new surgeon for me and getting me a referral. I was really worried that I was gonna have to go through my whole my family doctor again just to uh, get a referral. And you never know how long those are gonna take. I'm now going to be seeing John Semple, I believe, his, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, at the Women's College Hospital eventually when the Ontario lockdown uh, ends. And I believe I saw someone online who actually said that surgeries are starting back up again today. I've seen the 19th, which is today, and I've seen the 21st. So I don't, I don't know when it is. I don't know. Um, I'm really hoping to get top surgery before school starts again in September, but you know, you can't really be picky and when you're in and when your surgery date is, you kind of have to take what they give you. But I know I'll get top surgery eventually. It's just gonna, it's just a waiting game right now for everybody. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up and uh, comment down below what you guys want to see next. And uh, yeah, follow my Instagram and I have a Depop where I'm selling like some um, old band merch and like some clothes here and there. So, uh, yeah. Bye guys.